Maggie, we were on the air yesterday when Sandy Alderson out there in beautiful California was uh, addressing the media and went on for 45 minutes just droning on and on and on <laughs> and Harold in the background and and all this when you look at the Mets and <laughs> just, not a, there, just not a – well, it just was. I mean, if you went back – I went back and listened to it last night. I know you did as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was a long 45 minutes. I got to be honest <laughs> with you. But anyway yeah, – Between that know, and Aaron Rodgers, oh I didn't have a lot of free wow. time last I night. mean, it's just amazing. It just – God, what is going Keep on going, here? Going. All right. It's like the Energizer Bunny. But he goes on and on and on, right? So – you come out of it, and we hit a uh, you know we hit on some kernels of it yesterday during yeah. the course of our show, which was you know blaming New York City and you know people don't want you know they're cozy and comfy, whether it be family, whether it be school system, whether it be they don't want the challenge or the pressure here of New York. Right. I gotta be honest with you, the way that Sandy painted it yesterday, Maggie, I don't think the Mets' job is all that attractive. <laughs> I mean, nope. you know, you look at this job. I mean, the the Mets are now, and we'll get into Chromie and, and who they're looking at, right? We'll get into the fact that they're right now the guy that's leading the candidate for the GM search is a guy that hasn't been in baseball since 2017 and is working in uh, as a lawyer in the in the great city of Pittsburgh. We'll yeah. get into that Mergers here momentarily. Mergers and acquisitions. Right, so the Mets are telling you right now that they have the infrastructure to basically be honky-dory moving forward. They've got the two assistant GMs. They've got Sandy Alderson. Alderson basically telling you yesterday that we're okay. Even though they're at the GM meetings and the Mets don't have a general manager, we're in a fine position to do what we need to do. He's also basically told you yesterday that this is a one-year proposition for any GM that takes the place because we're gonna it's going to be trial by fire to see if that general manager – can actually do the job. How attractive is that? And they're kicking the tin can down the street when it looks at president of baseball operations. So for a organization led by the richest owner in all of Major League Baseball, for right now, you look at this situation, they had a year, over a year to figure this out. And still we sit here as the GM meetings go on, as qualifying offers are thrown out there, as the Mets are looking to try and rebuild this thing, The Mets believe they have the infrastructure to continue to run this organization as they see fit. They're not hiring a president of baseball operations. They're looking at a guy, the leading GM candidate, hasn't been in baseball since 2017. And you look at a scenario, whoever takes that job is going to get a one-year prove-it kind of a deal in order whether or not he or she is good enough for that position. And then they'll make the long-term determination a year from now. Did I get that right? This is a bunk offer. That's the reason why this job hasn't been filled. This is an invitation to come be the general manager of the Mets. This is not a real this is not a real offer to anyone who has half a brain or is in a good spot, whether they're the second in command or third in command of any franchise. Hell, this guy's a lawyer in Pittsburgh who's now the leading candidate to be the general manager. I, I, he might as well have become the, the GM of the Pittsburgh Pirates would probably be a better offer than what the Mets are giving you. And that's a team that's based on losing. Like, this is just not even real. So this was the the quote from Sandy yesterday. If, if you know, we've been pulling our hair out, trying to figure out why they can't find anyone to take this job. New York, all this BS. Here's what Sandy said. Assuming we only hire one person, there'd be at least a year runway for that person to demonstrate their ability and their potential. I've said this to others in the past. At least a year. That's the opportunity. That's all you can ask for. Demonstrated ability tends to get rewarded. Who would ever? Joe Douglas got six years. Who would ever leave a good situation for one year with, and let's just call it what it is. The Mets are one of the most dysfunctional franchises in all of sports. Like, you can't even just say baseball. The the, the types of fires that the Mets have to put out constantly puts them in a rarefied air. So you're asking somebody to come for basically a one-year tryout? What could they possibly do in a year, Moose, that's going to, what, turn around the culture? Going to bring, outside of winning the World Series, which we already know is going to be a total long shot because the cores eroded. So, like, there, here's the thing. You can talk about Cohen, and I'm sure he's an issue, or his tweets. You can talk about Sandy and Brynn. I'm so tired of the being right stinks. about this. The job isn't good. This is not a good offer. It's not a real offer. Like, that's the whole thing. Sandy might as well just get up there and be like, "I guys, I'm just doing this. Because he basically is. He can talk until he's blue in the face about not wanting it and wanting to step back. He already said he was going to have a seat at the table, just not the head of the table. So you're going to have to deal with Sandy at some point anyway. And he's not offering a good job. The reason why people aren't taking this job is because they're smart yeah. not to take it. Well, also, Moose, can we just talk about one thing? What's that? When somebody leaves 
the Washington Nationals because they're going to go be a lawyer in Pittsburgh. Doesn't that sound like code for something? It sounds like you're entering the witness protection program. I had to leave D.C. Why? Like because I'm going to become a lawyer in Pittsburgh. Even if you're from Pittsburgh, that still sounds like made up. Yeah, I mean, he got his law degree when he was working for the Nats. So either he was not doing a lot for the Nats or this guy's like the Doogie Hauser of law. Well, according to, you know, I was reading the piece on the Post because I had never heard of Adam Cromie until basically the last 36 hours when his name got popped out there, especially Same. yesterday. So I had no idea who the hell he was. Uh, and then you, you start to read super intelligent, very bright guy. I'm never sure. sat down in Washington out there scouting players. Was not a you know. Uh, you Maybe know. he wasn't in the office because of he these. was at law. He was in his uh, LSAT. Right, all of these things. That's that's Prep great. Class. But here's the deal. Like, so if you're Adam Cromie, yeah, why not take the one year gamble for him? He can go back to mergers and acquisitions <laughs> a year from now. He can. I mean, he's got his law degree. He can go get a job at a law firm. It doesn't mean anything. There's no there's no shine off his shoulder. It doesn't matter. So why not? He's like, yeah, why not? I'll be the GM of the Mets for a year. <laughs> I'm gonna get a one year runway to prove it. Yeah, why not? You know what? If I if I crash and burn. I can go back to being a lawyer. I mean, so he's got basically is he's got the golden parachute at the end. I mean, it's a win-win for Adam Cromie. If he's great, he remains as general manager. If he crashes and burns, he can go back to being a lawyer. Here, we're all looking for it. We're all looking for it. The job's not that great. No. The, no. the way the job is painted, it is not that great. And here's the tone deafness, if that's a word, of Sandy Alderson yesterday. Listen, stop blaming. I, I can't hear it. I, I can't hear about the pressure of New York City. I can't hear about that. We mentioned it yesterday. You know, why don't you look at the job? Why don't you look at it from the outside in and you are sitting in the room as you're vetting this out and you're vetting out these candidates and you're telling people, the general manager in St. Louis, you know, the guys in Milwaukee, uh, you know, guy down in Baltimore, you know, you're talking to Gene Afterman with the Yankees. You know, Raquel with the Boston Red Sox, and you're saying, well, we're going to give you a year. <laughs> we're, you're going to give me a year. I'm leaving the position that I'm in, which is a really good position, mm -hmm. which is I'm on a good career arc, and you're going to give me a – you're going to gamble on me for a year, and then you're going to figure out a year from now whether or not I fit, he or she fits. I mean, that's the offer? That's all you're – one to one, who the hell wants that job? Who the hell is taking that job? Number one, you got to deal with Sandy. You got to deal with his son. The assistant GMs are in place. I mean, Alderson basically painted the managerial position. Hey, listen, we've got the pick of the litter. No one else is looking for a job. No one else is looking for a manager in Major League Baseball. And you got Cohen, Steve. Yeah, I mean, oh, open up the eyes. This is embarrassing. I mean, this is embarrassing for your organization. There's no way to cut it. You've got Sandy Alderson now running things once again and saying at the GM meetings, it's no big deal that the Mets don't have a general manager because the infrastructure is in place and your leading candidate is a guy that hasn't been in baseball in four years. I mean, what am I missing here? I mean, this is insane. You're the Mets. Well, no, they're the Mets. See, there's two ways you can do that. They're the Mets. This is appealing. Or they're the Mets. And sometimes I think we overvalue that the passionate fan base, like sometimes we can be difficult, but in this sense and in this particular situation, it's not the fan base. This isn't New York. This isn't the the pressures here of starting to win. And some to some degree, I'm sure it is Cohen. I think it is Sandy. I think it's the job they're offering. This is just not a good job. And if you think about a year, let's think about just the last year for the Mets. Think about all the things that went wrong for the Mets this year. It started off with things going right. It started off a year ago, Cohen coming in as the owner, Francisco Lindor trade with Carlos Carrasco. Like, it started off like this was going to be really good. You get a scandal with your general manager that you hired. He's got to be out. The Mickey Calloway thing starts to, you know, that bubbles up to the surface, and so people have to pay the price and answer questions about that. More uh, investigation into the culture of the Mets. Some people lost their jobs. Some people were brought back. That had that whole thing had to happen. You start off the season and immediately, almost out of the gate, as great as Jacob Degrom. First of all, Lindor doesn't hit, so now you got people on him because he's looking like you know the first year is going to be a bust, which it basically was. And then, not long into the season, you're already dealing with Jacob Degrom, multiple MRIs. What's going to happen? Shutting him down. All of that. It was just like. If you were if you were on a one year deal, like by the time you got to the All Star break, you'd just be freaking exhausted. Yeah. I mean it. 
it, and then the Mets actually made a deal at the All-Star break. They bring in one of the best shortstops in baseball, and he immediately has a scandal where he's calling out the, the fans for booing his friend. Yeah, thumbs down. Ugh, I mean, it just, not to mention firing the hitting coaches midseason, not to mention all the other stuff that happened. It would be a la- It is a laundry list because it always is with the Mets. So you're going to offer somebody a, a year, and they're just going to get comfortable on the job before the other shoe drops. That's just the way it is. That's not me being negative. That's just me being a a fan for my entire life well, and, and just always waiting for the next thing. And just think about anybody else will say, well, okay, well, I'm willing to gamble on myself for a year, even if I'm in St. Louis or Baltimore or name some other Major League Baseball city. Would you? Like, would you? Like, would you yes. really, like, look at it and when say... When push comes to shove. When push comes to shove, yep. if you're looking at your scenario and saying, well, I'm in a really good spot, I'm part of a winning culture, winning team, you know, I've got job security... I am thought of really well within the organization. I'm well paid. All of this, and I'm I'm interviewing, or someone's calling me, interested for a job, and we're willing to give you a year to prove yourself on that job. Is that really the job that you're going to leave your position for? The answer to that is no. Mm-hmm. I mean, the answer to that is no. For an audition, and, basically. Yeah, that, you're not. I mean, you're not. And I mean, we're we're looking at where executives leave other organizations. My God, Joe Douglas got six years. <laughs> He got a six-year contract from the Jets. I mean, my God, look at that. Imagine, I mean, imagine if Joe Douglas, if, if Adam Gase and, and Chris Johnson at the time went to the Philadelphia, interviewed Joe Douglas and said, listen, we'll give you a year to prove yourself that you're that you're the right guy for the job. I mean, Joe Douglas would have basically told him to pounce sand. No, I'm not leaving Philadelphia for that. And what kind of offer is that? That's no offer. You're right. It's it's no offer from this organization. So now we know. You know, we were thinking about, okay, maybe there's a stone wall or, you know, maybe Steve Cohen is being, you know, blackballed by other owners in Major League Baseball. You know, maybe it's a case of the the tweets. Maybe it's the three- to five-year championship window. No. You know what? It was staring everyone right right in front of them. The job's not that good. Mm-mm. It's It's not that good of a job because the Mets believe they have the right people already in place. And how are you going to impact the organization? You're going to get the job. But a lot of the hires have already been made. 877-337-6666. So we're all sort of pulling our hair out here. Meanwhile, on the Yankees side of things, Moose, it's like, yes, you got some coaching positions that need to be filled. And Luis Rojas looks like it's going to be maybe the third base coach here for the Yankees. But like, think about what a luxury this is. Like, while the Mets don't have a general manager and people can say whatever they want about Brian Cashman and, and, and quibble with the job that he's done. Maybe you don't like him. Maybe you've had it out for him for a long time because you haven't liked some of the moves he's made. But, like, think about where the Yankees are. While the Mets are sitting here in, like, this weird purgatory trying to figure out what's going on with their organization, the Yankees are just like, should we spend $300 million on a shortstop or should we not spend $300 million on a shortstop? Like, champagne problems. Like, I know that this season was really difficult to watch for Yankee fans. The ups and downs of this year were just not what you anticipated, and the team, like, wildly underachieved. And they were supposed to be one of the best teams in the American League. But, like, now the Yankees go in asking themselves, like, does a $300 million shortstop really solve all of our problems? Like, that's the big Yankee point. Meanwhile, the Mets, it's like, well, we'll give you a year. Hey, hell, how about six months? Let's do it on a week-to-week. Like, let's just see what can you do in the first 24 hours that you can convince us. How about this? The Mets should have a reality show to fill this. Not Squid Game. That might feel like Squid Game, but something like that. You might as well. Yeah, and I'll tell you, Maggie, we were talking about it earlier in the week, comparison with the Yankees and the Mets. If the Yankees put out this job and put this kind of parameter around it, it would just be just as unattractive as the Mets job is. I think so. I mean, there's still a little more that the Yankees have, like the a little more, of, a lot more tell mystique me what, about them. But this well, is a, just a bad offer. Well, it, it really is. And tell me what impact you have. You already have a 341 million dollars shortstop in Francisco Lindor, and there are going to be other moves that are going to be made potentially before you even step into that job. I mean, Chris Bryan might be signed. <laughs> I mean, think about, I mean, all of these things when you're looking at, like, what impact then? What are you going to do? And he's still got Alderson with a seat at his table, no less his son. <laughs> Above you, Alderson. Below you, Alderson. Alderson all over the place. <laughs> Mayo Pack. It's Greg. What's going on, Greg? You know, thanks for taking the call, guys. I, the, every day, the Mets say something or do something that – it's beyond mind-boggling. Mm-hmm. So, so now there's going to be a one-year probation on 
the the rookie general manager that you're bringing into New York is that is that is that the scenario? No, that- they're calling it a one year runway so that you can show how adaptable you can be and you can really show your skill. It's a it's a, it's not a probationary period, Greg. Even though it sounds exactly like that, it's a runway. So have fun with that. Are they? Are they drinking over? Is there like <laughs> no, a they're, they're serious. Party? Is, no. is something? There's a problem. There's something deeply wrong in this organization. I mean, it is, I mean, do they look in the mirror and practice before they have these <laughs> press conferences and and realize what's coming out of their mouth is absolute gibberish? Yeah, I mean, and Great Greg, question. that's where you're. You're exactly right. That's where Sandy yesterday came off so poorly. I mean, whether it be blaming the city, the way that he painted or portrayed the job, all of the things that he came out, like Sandy, I mean, you've been around Major League Baseball for quite some time here. You really have. Um, Last year was not a great year for you for a lot of different reasons. And you come out and speak for 45 minutes yesterday morning out there in California, and that's the spin that you have to give? You're talking about blaming the city and the way that you portray and paint this job and think that this is some sort of attractive job, saying, well, my son, I would have to believe that my son would be loyal to whoever we hire as general manager. I mean, are we serious? The other thing he said about his son is that um, he's like, he doesn't even, he's he's not even like being kept privy of who we're interviewing. There's a firewall there. I'm like, okay, even if I believe that, so you're not telling your assistant GMs who you're thinking about hiring for the GM job? What kind of – how does that make any sense? Yeah, nice communication. Makes <laughs> little – makes no sense whatsoever. So nobody knows, like, who's in the know, who's in the know about these candidates? It's just Sandy and well, Steve. How is that smart? And Chris and Christie. And Chris Christie. And, uh, and some unknown hedge fund people from Point 72. Clark, New Jersey. Joe, what's going on, Joe? <laughs> what's up, guys? I mean – it's it's unbelievable, you know, Mag. I was thinking about it. You know, when when we, as Mets fans, when you know we knew that they were showing the team, if we if we tried, we couldn't have came up with a better owner for, as far as a diehard Mets fan, a billionaire. That's like a, that's like a dream. It's almost too good to be true. It was too and good to be this, true. And, and yet, this is a horror show. This, I mean, it's it's worse now than it ever was. It's unbelievable. You can't make this up. I mean, this is professional malpractice. What, how they run this team, in my opinion, it mm. really is. They shouldn't be allowed to run the team. I mean, what they do. <laughs> well, how baseball they already things. stepped in once, but that was for the Madoff well, it's, scale. It's, it's just un- you can, I mean, it's unbelievable. You mean they actually really sit there and take a step back and say, "This is." I mean, are, are we doing? I mean, Cohen's supposed to be this this business genius. I mean, billions is based on him. How is this? How does he allow this? There's something else going on, guys, that we don't know about. It has to be. No, I think this, this is, is it. No. Too but Joe, I, mean, I think ridiculous. we've gotten to the bottom of Joe, it. Joe, this is it. This the job is, stinks. The job isn't good. It, it's that's, just not that's good. The, that's the problem. Like the Cohen tweets, I think, are probably part of it. I think Sandy being there and his son is definitely part of it. But the the real crux of it is this was like if this job was posted on LinkedIn, you'd pass. You'd just pass. Like. It's just not what they're what they're advertising about the great parts of this job is not what they're actually offering. Yeah, it's it's like everything that that I mentioned about having the clearance to run the organization as you see fit is nonsense. I mean, it, it really is because you've already got decision makers in place. They're happy where their analytics department is. They've got the assistant GMs already in place. Sandy is still going to be there for another year. Yeah, he's going to be making baseball decisions before a president of baseball operations come into play. All of these things, Maggie, like you're like, I would look at and say, well, not only do I only have a one year runway, like, where's my impact? Right. Like, wh- where's my say? Like, what, wh- how much say do I have? Like, am I willing, like, if I, am I willing, am I able to be critical of Sandy's son knowing that he's basically running the entire franchise and he's my assistant GM? Say, if I don't want to work with Brent Alderson. I mean, like, like, that's the thing. And, and, like, you look at it and say, like, how do the Mets, like, how do you not have a little bit of self-awareness and look at the job and say, this is why you're sitting here for two months <laughs> not being able to hire anybody? 877-337-6666. And you had a year to work this out. I, I found the quote here from, from Sandy yesterday about the presence of Bryn Alderson as an assistant GM. Uh, Sandy called this idea a red herring, quote, for example, in this search, Bryn has no idea who we're talking to or have talked to. Yeah, it makes no sense. <laughs> He's your assistant GM. 
Right. So, Along with the other guy. So I have an assistant general manager that's not giving me any ideas about who potentially could be a good GM. Like doesn't even know. Like what? Has <laughs> no idea. And that's healthy? That's the is Mets. Is that a normal? Is that how things No, that's work not normally? normal. No. I don't think that's don't, normal. Don't look. Anything the Mets do, it's abnormal. Imagine their conversations like they go out to dinner. You just got to stay on neutral topics, I guess. Can't be like, so who'd you guys talk to? That's off the table. Right. You had a, you had the Met, you had Alderson yesterday telling you that ah, we don't have a manager, but don't worry, nobody else is looking for a manager either. Yeah. Meanwhile, we're, we're the only opening. <laughs> meanwhile, two other teams already what filled a, openings. What a sales job. <laughs> we wanted Bob Melvin, but he wanted to be close to Arizona. Great. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, and the Cardinals promoted from within. Yeah. I, I mean, what are we doing here? Right. I mean, <laughs> hey, hey, listen, if the Yankees. If the Yankees didn't bring back Boone, Boone might have been like, guys, I'm good. I'm going back to ESPN. (laughs) (laughs) Looks great. 